The EPC-1001P is ASUS's 10-inch netbook which features Intel's new Pine Trail Atom CPU. In addition to that 1.66 GHz processor, it's also equipped with 1 GB of DDR2 memory, a 250 GB hard drive, and weighs just under 3 pounds. Those specs are very respectable for an entry-level netbook, which the 1001P is with its $330 price tag. This model comes with Windows 7 Starter Edition. A good portion of a netbook's cost actually comes from the Windows 7 license, so it's a bit unfortunate that the OS feels so limited. Not having fancy UI enhancements like arrow window transparency is fine by me, but there are some aspects of Starter Edition that are really inconvenient. For example, you can't change the wallpaper of the desktop. And Taskbar Preview is one of the best features of Windows 7, also disabled. Worse yet, ASUS pre-installs a ton of bloatware onto the netbook, including an intrusive dock program that's more like a web store than an actual useful utility. It's one of the first things I disabled. Other pre-installed programs include Microsoft Works, a 60-day trial of Microsoft Office, and Skype. And though it's easy to remove these programs from startup or uninstall them completely, I'm a bit disappointed that ASUS makes you go through that hassle. But the one awesome piece of software that came pre-installed with this netbook is a quick boot operating system. So, for example, if you're in a rush and can't wait for Windows 7 to boot up, you can hit this button on the top left of the keyboard to load up Splashtop, which is a very basic Linux-based operating system that boots in less than 10 seconds. Splashtop comes with a web browser, a music player, photo viewer, and a chat client, which covers pretty much all your basic computing needs when you're on the go. Still, I'd recommend that you install yet another Linux operating system to do boot into, like Ubuntu Netbook Remix or Moblin. Since the 1001P comes with a 250GB hard drive, you have plenty of disk space to install multiple operating systems. These Linux distros are streamlined for netbook use, so you can get a full-fledged web browsing, email, chat, and media playback experience without the unnecessary user interface clutter or memory hogging software of Windows. And honestly, that's what you're mostly going to use a netbook for anyway. For those basic tasks, the 1001P performed admirably. In our media playback test, for example, H.264 encoded 720p video files played smoothly with VLC player. YouTube and Vimeo also ran without a hitch, but smooth playback is limited to standard definition. 720p flash videos on YouTube actually crashed our browser, so don't even think about trying to play 1080p video on this machine. We were also surprised to find that light gaming is possible on this netbook. Casual games like Plants vs Zombies and World of Goo played perfectly, and 3D games like Counter-Strike and Quake Live were also playable. These games alone are reason enough to keep Windows installed. But, as expected, heavier tasks did not perform well at all. And even though we can install Adobe Photoshop and run our benchmark, our custom script took 13 minutes to finish, which is more than four times longer than a full-powered laptop. In fact, we don't even recommend installing Photoshop on this netbook at all, since the 1024 by 600 resolution isn't even big enough for some of Photoshop's menus. So while the 1.66 GHz Pine Trail CPU doesn't do wonders for speed, it turns out that the big advantage here is power efficiency. The included 6-cell battery lasted over 4.5 hours when we played back a DVD rip with the screen on medium brightness, and that lifespan was doubled when we were using the 1001P just to browse the web and type documents. 8 hours of battery life falls short of ASUS's 11-hour claim, but it's still mighty impressive considering that last generation netbooks ran out of juice after 5 or 6 hours at best. Other perks of this model include an SD card media reader, 802.11n Wi-Fi, a VGA monitor out, and 0.3 megapixel webcam, and three USB ports. Even my 15-inch MacBook Pro only has two USB ports. From a usability standpoint, the 1001P is actually very comfortable. The keyboard is 92% the size of a full keyboard. It's the same one that ASUS uses in its entire seashell family of EPCs. I like this keyboard style a lot more than the chiclet design, like the one you find on MacBooks, since the keys are bigger and feel more responsive to fast typing. The one problem I had was that the backspace key and the insert keys are a little too close together, so you'll have to be careful about accidentally hitting one instead of the other while typing. Below the keyboard is a small Synaptics trackpad with multi-touch, so you can scroll down web pages and documents just by sliding two fingers down the pad, and you can use three finger tap for right clicks, but the solid cursor buttons are plenty good enough. Even though the ASUS EPC-1001P retails for $330, you can get it cheaper if you choose a smaller hard drive and a weaker battery. The price puts it in line with other entry-level netbooks, but its extra hardware features give it a leg up on competitors. ASUS definitely didn't skimp out on the hardware, but probably kept costs low with the bundled bloatware. I don't think the Pinechall CPU is enough to justify an upgrade for existing netbook owners, but first-time buyers will definitely enjoy the long battery life. Personally, I'm not a big fan of premium netbooks that are priced into the CULV and tablet computing territory, so the $300 price range is ideal if you want a bare-bones PC for light productivity and travel. The ASUS EPC-1000P fits that role rather nicely.
Assassin! <laughs>